Alkazam, everybody. All right, let's talk uh, handicapping briefly. Uh, review this last race that I posted from two days ago with the big plus 2200 win by uh, Noel uh, Beato here at Gulfstream Park. Uh, he's the number 11 horse, is the winner. Red top and red hat. California GG and Karenville, the first two out in the Rosa Star. And we got that rail. That's perfect. Triple yes. So as you can see, uh, Beato there with the white pants and the red, uh, right in the middle of the frame, the red shirt and hat. He's got an outside position. He was coming from an outside gate position. Never makes it to the inside from what I can see. Four across the course. Hot goalie is behind his feet, well down toward the rail, working over his beautiful start. Nice move by Nemi Hamadez to get her in the two-path from post number 10. Considering his next, then comes Capri Gray, out three wide on the course and throwing baby. He's only five or six points behind him. It's three wide. You got uh, the one horse, then the two horse, then you got uh, three three wide in the third row, and then in the fourth row is the seven, whatever the pink apron horse is, and the eventual winner, the 11. So he's three wide, four rows back. Going out at the first turn. Uh, the early trailer is Sweet Actress. The early leader is Perfect Kimberly Yes, who reported in 23 and 4. She leads by length over Wilson Star, the nearest pursuer second. Up the third goes California GG, Karen Bill is four wide. Two pass for Beautiful Star at the rail of Hot Bodie. On hold, Kiss She's under a snuggle, too. She's about six lights off the lake while looking. Second to last place now. The, the nine horses dropped off the back of the. Dropping off the radar at the bottom, basically. Bang of the clear. Up on her outside with Capri Gray, then throwing baby. And Sweet Actress is last. 47. Horse is like five wide there on that back straightaway. Seconds for a pretty swift half mile. Perfect Kimberly S to the far turn by two and a half. Rosa Star second toward the rail. Hakoni tries to secure the rail spot from third up on the outside of Karenville. Castella's on the go now for Paco. She's in the clear four wide, watching her attack with only two and a half points to raise. Five six feet to go. Castella swooping up on the outside. And she's up the challenge for the lead. Right back at her. Perfect Kimberly S. Throwing baby is under one. There comes 11 around the outside. He just made the big sweeping move with the red hat on. He's gaining in the corner where he has the longer trip. See the red hat with a white stripe on it there between the front two horses in the back side there. Looking for him as Hakoni, California GG has no place to go. Winding up in the back of Free Ray, they're at the top of the stretch. Castella takes over, turning the outside, throwing baby. And here we go. They're in the final stretch now. Again, the 11 horses is way wide. He's had a much longer trip, and he just hits the gas here and goes. Those are headed to the right. Hakoni on the inside. Eighth of a while to go. It's Castella in front of the solid chargers on either side. Here's Thrilling Baby on a big number. She takes the lead late. Thrilling Baby for Hakoni. Thrilling Baby at 23 to 1. Hakoni second. Castella flat out late. She was third. Fourth is Capri Ray. Then beautiful star for the high. So that was Thrilling Baby at uh, 23 to 1, as the uh, track announcer just just talked about. Let's, uh, all right, let's look a little bit here at the, uh, at the numbers. So the first question is, um, what, you know, what through the morning line set her so far off on this horse? Because the, the horse had a longer trip the entire time, and... It seemingly has way more gas in the tank when it gets to the final stretch. It's the, those huge sweeping turns. It's wide the whole time, longer trip. Uh, and then the horse just has more finishing power, you know? Uh, and it was a fairly tight field. It wasn't like it was the horse fell way back. Um, it was like, you know, and they'll sell it as a closing run, but I don't know what that means. I mean, it was, they were. That horse was four rows was four rows deep on the uh, front on the uh, first stretch, the first straightaway. Uh, it was four rows deep. There wasn't much distance between the horses, so it was basically four and a half, five lengths at most. It's not like he was there was a pack ten lengths behind that overcame. So I wouldn't call it a closing run per se, uh, but it just seemed like he was faster the whole way. So what I'd like to know is what, and it's out of nowhere, 23 to 1. I mean, what throws the morning line setter off this far? Um, for him, you know, not to know that, I mean, so does that, is that telling us as handicappers, were the time trials, were the time trials numbers rigged so the line setter didn't know? Did the, the uh, did, were there other, were there other factors in why that horse was dropped? to lower on the morning line setting because I think it went off at 23, but I think the morning line was 20 to one. So I think it was uh, at the bottom of the pack from the line setter 
So what goes into that and how do we divine that knowledge to handicap these big upsets would be the first case. Let's look at the line setter for the whole day, though. I want to show you because I've been tracking this of where they put the upsets in because there always seems to be one... <laughs> One big upset in each half to blow out the the horizontal exotics. And today was a little different. So this was again for um, Thursday, December 29 at Gulfstream Park. So we go to race one. There's the, uh, we got a horse three wins, uh, pays 320. So nothing but a fade there. Uh, line setter spot on. It is... Um, it's an eight to five. It's the line setter's number one pick, I believe, there. Either way, it's in the top three. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, we missed a race there. Let's go back. Uh, race number one was, was the number four horse. The number four horse was three to one, and uh, the, it was the line setter's like third pick two and three were tied there was a two to one horse and two three to one horses so the four horse was a three to one horse so it was it was a top three pick by the line setter number two we just went over three horse was the eight to five number one pick by the line setter so line setter's doing great he's watching the time trials giving us giving us good predictions on what the, what the payouts for the pricing should be Go into race three. We got horse four again. Horse four is a three to one. There's also a two to one and a five to two. So the horse horse four is the line setters on the morning line, the line setters third pick. So again, the line setters top three are in the winner circle. Three races in a row. Spot on. That's how it's supposed to be. The phase are coming in. We get the race four. Horse seven comes in. It's a seven to five. There's a seven to five. Uh, uh, seven to two and a nine to two uh, are the top three. So again, the line setters uh, pick number seven as his first overall morning li morning line pick, seven to five. So he's spot on. He he's taking care of business at Gulfstream. I mean, this is an amazing day. If he if he was playing for money, he'd be getting paid. He'd be the wealthiest horse better in the world. Okay. So let's go to race five. Now, race five is where the end of the morning pick five and pick four and all that stuff comes in. And race, uh, the horse number three in race five comes in. And what a surprise, right on schedule, the line setter can't pick shit. So he blows out and a 12 to one comes in, which blows everybody out of their horizontal bets, right? Or a lot of the people out, Okay. So we seem to see that quite a bit. It, it's just predicting which race it's going to be. Had I been playing these races in real time, uh, would have loved to bet the house on the on the, uh, the 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 three long shot horses in this race or whatever the two longest horses. There was an eight to one still in play. There was two eight to one still in the play and a 12 to one. Either way, would have been big, big money. But I mean, it seems like anytime all these faves come in, then they blow out the horizontal bets by having a, uh, a huge dog come in in the last race of those pick four, pick five, pick sixes. Okay, so that's race five. And let's look at the payouts. Uh, to see, do they have them on this one? Where's the exotics? Um, Sorry, I'm on a different website here. This one's easier to use, but it, uh, here's the exotics. I'm trying to remember where they are. Okay, so the pick five, the pick five, uh, four, three, six, four, five, six, seven, three. So they had some dead heats in there. Anyways, the two dollar paid out payout paid twenty one bucks for the pick five. Um, <clears throat> four of five, I believe that's the first one. Is the four or five? 21 bucks, I'm sure. So a lot of people hit that, again, because it was all faves in the first four races. So everybody got a little payout. The pick five of five, if you had it, said it paid $1,079. And the total the total pool was $380,000. So I'm guessing that means, what, 370 people or so had that ticket to receive that $1,000 payout which is sweet payout on a 50 cent tick pick five. But again, that last horse, uh, I mean, that's the insider information. If you played all the faves and if you played the, the top three faves on every ticket, 
and knew that twenty three to one horse. I mean, I, 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 you know, I don't know. Who knows? Do do insiders get this information? How does this work? I, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, or is it profit taking by the house? I, I don't know. Or maybe it's all fair and square. We're reading too much into this. But it, either way, it always seems like they get in four faves, and then the fifth horse, all of a sudden, then the line setter doesn't doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground and, and can't pick nothing. So let's go to race six. Let's see how they started off. It plays a little differently today, I notice. So race six, race six horse uh, got a six dollar and eighty cent winner here. The one horse, the one horse was a five to two. There's a five to two, a seven to two, uh, a nine to two. So spot on. Here we go. Beginning. Beginning of the late pick four, and the uh, line setters right on again. We get in here to race seven. Uh, we've got two horse comes in at twelve point eight to one. So that's an uh, that that two horse is an is an eight to one morning line. Line setter had a uh, had the five horse at seven to two. Rather had the three horse at seven to five. The five horse at seven to two and then he had two five to one horses and two eight to one so again that two horse was was tied for tied for being last place by the morning line so totally off on the morning line pick he would have been you know sixth sixth or seventh out of the seven horses by odds for the two horse but came in on top paid 1280 now we get into race eight we got three on top, pays $21. So now we got two races in a row here where we had the first four races, line setter spot on, race five, nothing, race six, spot on. And now we've got seven and eight where the line setter's totally off the mark. Three horse was a six to one fave and the morning line had had the seven as the best horse at seven to two. The one horse was the second at three to one. Uh, the two horse was nine to two. And uh, then the three horse, I guess, was the fourth best horse, which won. It was six to one. The three horse was six to one and it won. So again, line setters, top three, not in the winners, not not in the winning position. And then that brings us to Race number nine, where a big winner by uh, Inato uh, 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 Bay, where the, the jockey Bay Bayado wins on thrilling thrilling Bay. This was a twenty three to one or plus twenty two hundred if you express it like that in American odds. So you got again this this race had what eleven eleven runners with one scratch. Uh, and the morning line, the morning line was a nine to two on horse four. Uh, horse three was the second best, which did come in second as a four to one. Uh, and then you had a five to one, a couple six to ones. At any rate, thrilling baby, horse 11 came in first at 20 to, 20 to one. Morning line went off at 20 to three. So nowhere near. So, I mean, how do we guesstimate these 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 line setters or where this is going to happen? It's just striking to me that he's spot on. He's spot on with with picking in his top three picks. He picked the winner. Either his first, second, or third morning line was the winner in five of the first six races. Every race except for five. Uh. Then in race six, he picks one. And then seven, eight, and nine, he's nowhere near it. You, none of his top three picks hit the winning spot. So very strange. Uh, I don't know. Comment, subscribe. How, how do you guys handicap? Uh, does anybody, anybody play? Do any of you guys play horizontal exotics? How do you play them? Um, vertical exotics, how do you play them? Do you just play traditional win place or show? Uh, what do you look for? Comment. Give a shout out, anything, uh, you know, tell me I'm totally wrong. I, it seems like it's influenced to me here, uh, especially on that race nine with that big upset. But but I don't know, uh, you know, 
I mean, do you do you got do you guys out there play in real time and wait for a number of favorites to come in and then go ahead and uh, be holding your bets and then throw some money on the dogs after three or four faves come in, thinking that uh, that's it's finally time for an upset? What kind of strategies do you use? Just some thoughts. Good luck on all your wagers. Again, this is Alt Horse Think, Al Kazam. Come back and watch us, talk to us, comment to us. Make some videos of your own. Show me some of your crazy races. Show me some of your tickets. Good luck.